Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MacTube. It's me, Deepak George, and this is lesson number two in study with me for probability and statistics. In our first lesson, we learned a lot about the basic things related to statistics. And we learn how important data is in statistics. And I told you one more thing. Most of the things in this world seems to follow some pattern. And to analyze the pattern, we need information which is statistically called data. And once we collect data, we need to find a few numbers which will give us a clear idea about the data and those numbers are called statistical measures for example i am collecting some information about the blood pressure of students at two o'clock in my college now i want to know that for some reason i want to know whether like what you call the blood pressure is like really high or low or like what you call just plain etc etc for some analysis now somehow i managed to measure the blood pressure of many many students at two o'clock now look at this i might end up with hundreds and hundreds of data items but instead of looking at all those numbers i want just a few numbers which will clearly tell me about the data and they are called statistical measures. Now look at this. The theory part is very, very important. I'm repeating. This is not your mathematics paper. The theory is very important. That's why I'm talking so much. And I have collected all the theory questions like this. Anyway, in statistics, they ask approximately 10, 11 questions. And I told you, the way we learn will be statistics and correlation regression together. So together there are around 11 questions and in every semester they keep on asking something related to these 11 questions. Something related to these 11 questions. So you can take a print screen and you can try to answer this. But remember most of the questions are worth 3 marks to 5 marks. So if you write a one line answer they are not going to give you mark if you try to be innovative and make your own answer they are not going to give you mark you have to write proper points you can write in your words but you are not allowed to write your own theory don't create your own theory but you are allowed to write in your words anyway you can google about these things or you can look at the last video and you can observe the class more because we will talk a lot of theory stuff here. Okay, now take your calculator because we are directly going to calculator. Okay, now look at this. In your examination, you are supposed to get questions related to mean, median, mode, etc, 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 standard deviation. Anyway, you will come across three different types of data and I'm sure that you've seen the same thing in your class 10, in your class 12, etc. Anyway, the first type of data is called individual series or discrete data. It is kind of like the raw data or data collected directly from the source. For example, the mark of a few students I have noted down here 20, 30, 31, 25, 23, 47. Maybe it is according to the roll number. Now the second thing is marks and I don't want to repeat it again and again. Can you see? I have repeated 20 once and twice. But here instead of writing it two times or three times, I am writing 20 repeats 3 times. So the data is actually 20, 20, 20. And then 25, 25, 25, 25, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 35, 35, 40, 40, 40. So type 1 and type 2 
are the same but in type 2 it's a little bit classified and in type 3 we can cover a huge range can you can you look at the last type type 3 in type 3 what happens is we are giving you a range 20 to 25 and it is compulsory it should start with the same number 25 to 30 then 30 to 35 35 to 40 etc okay so once more in your examination you can expect either the data looks like this or this or this and in our class we will call it type 1 type 2 type 3 but you have to understand one very important thing type 1 and type 2 are the same in type 1 I wrote the numbers again and again and again but in type 2 I made it short by giving the repetition and by the way the repetition is called frequency okay now we are ready with the calculator I feel most of the students are using this calculator fx991ex and if you don't have this calculator I'll strongly recommend buy this and if you are buying a calculator now most probably you will not be able to find this uh, this is the latest one which is available in Kathmandu okay so you can have this calculator or this calculator I hope you are not using this one like five six years before this used to be very popular and if you are still using it it's okay that's uh, like what you call this will do the job so if you want you can take a screenshot of this how to work this calculator anyway I am going directly to this calculator okay so you can note it down or take screenshot point number one you have to turn on the stat mode let me tell you something very important you are all engineering students in engineering statistics is a tool when you go into your profession or when you do some research you will understand that no one cares whether you are going to write your data in a piece of paper and use a calculator and add all the data write it neatly no one cares about this thing the main point is interpretation calculation has very less value in this era because there are so many softwares ready to do that job you can do it in excel sheet you can do it in softwares like what you call SPSS you can use the software called R it's okay but the main point is interpretation so as an engineering student when you learn probability and statistics you should remember it is a tool for you and when you use statistics as a tool you should learn to use technology and in your university they have allowed the use of calculators so use calculators and avoid long long calculation you are not a class 10 student or a class 12 student or a main statistics student you are an engineer okay so first of all you put it into stat mode and we will use one variable because today we are dealing with only one parameter and then you can turn on or off frequency according to your necessity this are the buttons and then for the calculation first of all you have to put it into stat mode I told you already then turn on or off according to your necessity then you press the option button here can you see the option button yeah and if it is one variable without frequency you will see this if it is one variable with frequency you will see this and then you enter the data it is just using equal to uh, for example if you want to type the number 32 you type 32 and press equal to it will appear here appear here appear here and once you enter the data you can press the AC button or the on button 
and the data will disappear but it will be in the memory of your calculator and whenever you want to do calculation it is very simple press the option button and you will see something called one variable calculation okay now I'll show you the other calculator and we'll go to the problems. Now this is the latest one. I'm sure one or two of you might be using this calculator also. Uh, it's made completely differently. They have skipped many buttons, but they have kept everything inside this home and tools and catalog. Okay. Anyway, I'll show you the buttons one by one. So turn it on, press the home button. Home button is over here and press statistics choose one variable or two variables according right now we are doing only one variable don't worry about two variables and press ok then when you are in stat mode I think you already entered stat mode you press tools tools is right over here and you can choose on or off frequency as you wish now once you are in stat mode you will see this or this like I told before and enter the data press ok did you see the ok button it's here the ok button is over here okay now let's do one problem let's enter this data I'm using this calculator right now your calculator let it be this calculator or the old calculator or the latest calculator you put it into stat mode the steps are here for the old calculator don't get worried whether it is an old calculator or a new calculator all you have to know is you have to know the method so here I put stat mode and I know that there is only one variable that is mark only one parameter and frequency is off I turned off the frequency now I'm going to enter the data 20 30 31, 25, 23, 47, 28, 20, 25. Okay, so after you enter the data, you can press this. Can you see this blue button, AC button? Yeah, press AC. And now you press option and do one variable calculation. Now look at this. I already calculated before I started this video. So you can confirm your answer. Please put it in the, the live comments or the comments below. Did you get the same X bar? I did it a little bit fast. So I hope my answer is correct. Now I want you to be very careful with these two characters. These two represent standard deviation. In video number one, I didn't talk about one very important thing. That is population and sample. We will come across this again and again and again in this course. Remember, population means you consider all the members in an experiment. Like I told you before, the theory part is very important. So listen to each and every definition we discuss in class. So what do you mean by population? Population means all the experiment objects will be considered for example i am conducting an examination in my college and let's say in my college i am conducting the examination for 200 students so if i consider all the students who are taking that exam i will call that a population study and by the way data collection from population is called census I'm sure you know this word have you heard of this word maybe yes okay now instead of collecting information from all the characters in the experiment if I pick a few characters randomly it is called sample now look at this the population parameters means whatever we calculate from the population and the sample parameters that means whatever we calculate from a sample have different notation for example when you refer a statistics book and if you see the letter mu you have to understand that they got that answer from a population at the same time if you see x bar 
you have to understand that all the characters are not included in the study. So, when you do the calculation, be very careful. This stands for sample arithmetic mean. And remember, when you use a calculator, the sample arithmetic mean and the population arithmetic mean will have the same value. So, you have to read the question. When you read the question, you will understand whether... I will show you one question. Look at this. This is from your question paper. And by looking at this question, I can understand this is type 1. This is type 1. And I can also understand that they are talking about sample. So I will plug in all the information, I mean all the 45 numbers into my calculator. And I will calculate the mean. And when I write sample mean, I will use the notation x bar. I will not use the notation mu. I will use the notation x bar because they have clearly mentioned it is, a, it is about 45 hospital patients, a sample. Okay, I um, will stop this video right now. So, I will be back very soon with another video. So, till then my friends, bye.